Hey everybody, welcome back to Just Add Liberty. You may not know this about me, but I will slam on my brakes, pull off of the road, and dive head first into a bush to get some elderberry plants, elderberry cuttings. Now, I don't, uh, I'm not a plant identification expert, so I have to wait until the elderberries already have the flowers on the top of them in order to know that that's what they are. And so it's just recently here within the past few weeks, some elderberry have started popping up so that I can be like, oh yeah, that's elderberry. And I've been wanting to add some for a while and I was just too cheap to go and buy it because I know that there are several plants here, several places around here where I can go and get it for free. And I tried uh, doing some cuttings last year and just didn't have much luck rooting them because I waited till like July to pick them. So I'm getting a little earlier start this year and I'm hoping to have more success. In fact, I actually, we were at a golf game with my son uh, a couple weeks ago and I saw some elderberry and took some cuttings off of it. Hopefully the folks at the snooty golf course won't care that I took some of their elderberry plants. So I took some cuttings and I actually rooted them in water. I'll show you what they look like. After a couple of weeks, they look really pretty good. So all this stuff here is new growth that came off and then you can kind of see the roots are starting to develop. Whoops. So I don't know if you can see that. So those little white things sticking out down there, those are the roots starting to develop on the elderberry plants. And really these look better than the ones that I tried to root last year. Again, it was like July and I had them sitting outside and it was, I think it was just too hot. So here is some other ones that I did right here. And we got some pretty good growth up there. And even on that one right there, and even like right here, see where that little joint is right there. I, I guess I didn't realize that's, that is what that was. And so the, the, the plant is actually putting off leaves right there. Sorry, I'm not a very good videographer. So anyway, so I, we were out at uh, the farm, my husband's grandfather's farm the other day on the way back and I was watching because I knew that in these low lying areas, especially along creeks and stuff like that, that's where you'll be able to find elderberry. I was watching and saw some and, and had my husband pull over and so I'm going to root up some different ones. I'm going to pot up some different ones, but I'm going to do it a little different. I, I found another method online um, of root, potting them up. So I'm going to do a little experiment. It, it, really, it would have been better if I'd done this at the same time, but I only had one set of blue, uh, elderberry cuttings and didn't have the, all the ingredients that I needed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a, uh, this is, uh, let me show you what I'm doing. So this is vermiculite that's in here. It's it's a very fine grain vermiculite. It doesn't have to be though. Uh, the only reason this is is because that's all they had at the feed store when I went. So I've got three scoops of vermiculite here. I'm going to put three scoops of peat moss. So it's going to be a 50-50 ratio of peat moss and vermiculite. And I'm just going to mix this up real good. And I should put my gloves on so that my hands wouldn't be disgusting, but oh well, it is what it is. All right, so now that I've got that good mixed up, what I'm going to do is dust my hands off and then add a little water to it. And I do have gloves, so put my gloves on before I get this wet. And I don't want it to be sopping wet, I just want it to be damp. good it's yeah, let me see. kind of 
clumping together, but it's not, water's not dripping out of it. So I think that's probably moist enough. Apologies to those who are oogied by the word moist. And now I'm gonna say it about 15 more times so that you're totally grossed out. Moist, moist, moist. My husband has some cousins that it, that word just, is like fingernails on a chalkboard to them. I don't really see what the big deal is. I don't know if I have any words like that that just grossed me out. But apparently moist is like that for several other people. So apologies to those who don't like the word moist. But I don't know any other way to describe this. Or well, maybe damp. But damp and moist, they're not the same. Not the same connotation. So see how it's kind of holding together? But when I squeeze it, there's not a bunch of water dripping out. That's about the consistency that you want it. All right, next part of our process is we are going to fill these little plastic bags with dirt, which should be very interesting because that hole is tiny, but fortunately I have a little tiny shovel. So we'll see, hopefully it'll work. And if it doesn't, you'll get to watch live, well not live, because this is recorded. Oh, maybe that's gonna work. Nice. Very nice indeed. All right, I got four of them. I'm starting to get sweaty, and you guys don't want to see a big sweaty mess of me on camera. So I'm going to stop there, and you grab my elderberry, and then I'm going to show you how to cut it, or at least how I cut it. So these are some cuttings that I took, uh, I guess it's been about a week ago, because it was last Sunday. And I have not had time, again, I didn't have the ingredients, so I just stuffed them in my uh, fountain. And they're not real happy about being wet from being in the fountain, or at least being splashed on so hopefully they'll still do okay but what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna take my and if you don't know what elderberries look like what you can do this time of year at least in Texas is you can identify them because they've got these little white flowers and these are budded but they're not quite flowers yet but you'll see these little heads of white flowers sticking up and most of the time like I said these things grow pretty close to like creek beds, not like down in the creeks, but maybe up on the bank, because uh, uh, apparently they like water. So they live close to creek beds and where it's kind of weedy. So you'll probably have to climb through some stuff to get to it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do on this is I'm actually gonna cut off. So I'm gonna cut this off here. I should have cut this down a little lower to begin with. So I'm gonna cut this off. This is gonna be the bottom. We're gonna cut it at a 45 degree angle, like so. All right, and then I'm gonna cut up here and I'm gonna cut it, now that the popo's gone, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna cut this just straight across, like so. Now, I read online that you should leave two of these nodes because the roots will come out here and the uh, flowers or the leaves will come out here, but that's not what I'm seeing in these that I'm propagating. There are roots coming up all along the stem where they're in the water. And then right here above these nodes is where the flowers are coming out. Or not the flowers, but the limbs, leaves. So again, here, right here, we got a node right there and that's where the limbs are coming out. Those look like, don't look like roots to me. Those little white things look like the roots to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna do it that way. I'm gonna do it the way that my own eyes show me I should do it. And I'm gonna cut 
right above the node here on a 45 degree angle and then cut this off at the top above this node. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna shove it in one of these little bags here, okay? We're gonna push that down in there. Maybe I shouldn't have packed the dirt in there so tight. I'm gonna kinda wiggle it down in there. Like so. And then I've got some rubber bands here. I'm gonna put a rubber band on it to keep it in place. Maybe I'll fold this down a little. So it's not crowding there too bad. So my experiment is gonna be which ones do the best for rooting? Um, because what I've read, now I tried this last year where I just stuck them in a bucket and I did not have good success with that. So I am gonna have these plastic bags and theoretically I should be able to see the roots as they start coming out on this thing. Kind of like those uh, ant hills that you're able to see inside of them. So. We're gonna put a rubber band on here. To keep it tight. Now I also said that heard uh, saw that you should leave these on, but the ones that I left it on, most of the leaves have died and fallen off. So I think I may just go ahead and trim it off. Because like, okay, so this one, see the limb just kind of died, shriveled up and died, but there's still buds coming right there. So I think what I may do, oh, and this one, they fell off completely, but it's still putting out little, whoops, there you go. It's still putting out some little limbs right there. So I'm going to just cut these off because it'll be easier to wrap my uh, rubber band. So I'm gonna cut these off. I may regret it, who knows. But you know what? For the price I paid for these, I can do some experimentation. And the only thing I'm out is a little bit of time and zero dollars all right so there we go got it all bundled up and i'm going to do the same thing with all my other cuttings that i make and just do them like this and then when i get done well i'll show you when i get done all right so from one cutting i got five potential little elderberry plants and all it cost me was a plastic bag or rubber band um a little bit of time and some peat moss and vermiculite. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set these here on my potting bench, like I have my other ones, because they seem to be pretty happy here. So I'm gonna put them here, and just, I've, get, I've got indirect sunlight here. And uh, so I'm just gonna leave them here, and we'll check back in a couple of weeks and compare them to the progress of these guys at two weeks. Now these will be two weeks ahead of them, but we'll just kinda watch. Now I have heard that elderberries that are rooted in water are a little more, uh, the roots are a little bit more, uh, what should I say, wimpy is what I kind of read. So hopefully these will have stronger roots because they're actually in dirt as opposed to water and they have to push push away. And But it'll be interesting to see which ones work out better. Maybe those will work out better because they've got a two week head start and it's fixing to get warm here in East Texas. So it'll be a cool little experiment. I've got several other little branches over there I need to get done, but that is how I am propagating elderberry. It's a pretty simple, easy way to do it. Now, another thing you can do, like I said, last year what I tried is I took the same mixture and then just stuck the elderberry plants down in there. Cause I saw another guy say to do it and just put a lid on top of like, like mix it up in a five gallon bucket and then just put a lid on the five gallon bucket. Well, it's so humid here in East Texas, it just got, it turned into a big moldy mess. So I'm hoping that this method will work a little better for me. That's gonna be it for today, guys. I will keep you posted on our progress. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Hey, one thing I forgot to tell y'all about elderberry is that you need to have, it needs a, a, a pollinator. So you need to have two different varieties in order for it to produce fruit. It'll flower, but then if you don't have a cross pollinator, it won't produce fruit. Now, the question is, did I get two different varieties by going out and just randomly picking up, picking it up beside the creek? Um, I'm hoping that I did. And so I guess next year we'll find out. So that's another reason why I wanted to do these a little different is so I'd be able to tell them apart from my golf course uh, elderberry. So this will help me distinguish between my golf course elderberry and my creek bed elderberry. I uh, don't have a clue what the variety is. 
and on and I don't know how you would tell the different varieties it's just I don't know we'll figure it out when when the time comes hopefully I'll plant both of these different varieties or both of these different plants sets of plants and then be able to figure out if they are cross pollinators or not so that's one more thing to keep in mind if you're going to have elderberry on your property is try and get two different varieties so that they will cross pollinate and then produce fruit for you